All right, welcome to Three Gates Films and another tutorial today. We are talking about how to get your voice, your vocals to pop and get them to sit really nicely above the music without them getting drowned out by the music. Um, so I have uh, here a sample of my voice reading some poetry from a children's book. I sat by the lake, I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. A fly went by, he said, oh, Okay, there's a little sample of that, and beneath it I have some two samples of music. One is much more docile, like this. The other one I have is this, actually from the same piece of music, but it's later on, it's much louder and much more noisy. Here we go. I'm using these two examples because I want to show you how we can get the music to, to fit in even to really noisy. Uh, music. So uh, I'm going to show you the first techniques I use on my voice. One of the first things I do, is there's, there's four plugins that I use on my voice. So on Adobe Premiere here, we want to go to the audio track mixer. Um, I put the effects on each individual track the entire way through. So uh, every time there's an instance of my voice, it's going to be on track one, somebody else's voice on track two, a third voice on track three, uh, various pieces of music on different tracks. I don't put effects on individual clips. So on the audio track mixer, we're going to click on this little tiny arrow up here, and for some reason a lot of people don't know about this, it brings up an effects rack that you can add effects to. So on channel 1, A1, which is my voice, I'm going to add, first thing is EQ. So the first thing I always do is add a, a, a parametric EQ. And I'm going to get rid of the first thing to do is get rid of the low frequencies in my voice. We don't need anything beneath 100 hertz. So I'm going to click on high pass here and drop this down to minus 30 dB and bring this over to about 99 or 100 hertz. So we're not hearing anything any longer beneath 100 hertz in my voice. Um, as well as we're going to do a, a low pass. We don't want to hear the really shrill high frequencies that are unnecessary. So we're going to, once again, minus 30 dB, and we're just going to bring this down, you know, it's right about there. So we're going to play my voice, and we're going to look at what the frequencies are doing. Let's mute this music real quick. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. Okay. I sat by the lake. I looked at... Okay, so you can see that in my voice on this microphone. By the way, this is a, a warm audio microphone uh, plugged into the Focusrite. Um, Scarlett Solo USB interface recorded into Adobe Audition. So you can see with this setup, the frequencies here uh, in the you know in the 1.5k to 4k are a little bit low, a little bit not too present. So I'm gonna I'm gonna boost those frequencies a bit. Uh, kind of boost 20 right in the set about 2400 hertz, 2500 hertz. I'm gonna boost it up and kind of widen it a little bit just so that it maybe not that much. Not that much increase. Okay, and that's, for my voice, that's pretty much all that I do. I just know my voice and it generally sounds good when I do that much. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a multi-band compressor. And we're gonna tweak that in a setting here. I'm gonna double click on it, and I don't want the, the ratio of the lows to uh, boost at all. And my main setting here I'm messing with is the threshold here. I'm gonna reduce the threshold down to like eight, eight to nine. Um, what this is doing is it's, it's, it's choosing where we're going to grab the, the, the level from to bring it up. If I don't do anything, if I leave this at zero, there's almost no change. So listen, here is with it on. I sat by the lake. I looked at the... And off. The sky. And as I looked, a fly went. No change whatsoever. But if I turn it on and bring this down to negative eight or nine here. Now listen. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky. That's with it on. Here's with it off. And as I looked, a fly went by. A fly went by. He said, oh dear, I saw him shake. All right, it's a huge difference with it on. Um, the next thing, that's just basic settings. I, I, I don't do a ton of tweaking within the compressor uh, because I get good results, but you can tweak this all day long. You can change the ratios uh, of each frequency set. You can change the frequencies that you're changing the ratio to. Um, the next thing I'm going to add is um, under special here, it's mastering. Double click on that and change this setting from bright hype to subtle clarity. The bright hype is just bonkers nuts and sounds horrendous and harsh. Um, 
I'm turning the reverb down to zero on this. I don't want any reverb. Um, that's only really if you're trying to add some ambiance that your room didn't have. That's usually the opposite of what people are trying to do. Um, and then the exciter here, I'm going to turn this up to about 30 and leave it on retro. And widener, we're going to turn it up to 50. Loudness, leave it alone. Output game, game, leave it alone. And now we're going to play that back um, like that. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. Okay, let's turn it off. A fly went by. He said, oh dear. I saw him shake. He shook with fear. On. And when I saw the fly go past, I asked him why he went so fast. All right, so we're bringing out that really, that clarity. You know, those those vocals that the, you, you can almost hear the vocal cords slapping together. It doesn't sound harsh. It just sounds nice and crisp and clear. The final thing I'm going to do is add a limiter to prevent it from going over 0 dB just in case I had some loud points in there. So that's under compression, hard limiter, and I'm going to turn it down to um, just 1 dB, minus 1 dB. All right. So let's play that as it is. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. All right, let's turn on our music, our subtle music bed here, and see what results we get without doing anything to the music on channel three. We're gonna hear what it's like when the, it's turned up all the way. Let's listen real quick. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. A fly went by. He said, oh dear. Okay. So uh, take a look here on the master. We're already having a little bit of peaking here. So one thing I'm going to do there uh, before I move on, because what I always do is is, is add a uh, limiter. So the voice actually sits pretty okay within this piece of music. We do want to turn it down a little bit. So let's just bring it down a bit and play it. I, I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky. And as I looked, a fly went by. A fly went by. He said, oh dear, I saw him shake. All right, that's not too bad. But in the same piece of music, later on, the volume increases a lot and it gets a lot busier. And listen to what happens. Same exact piece of music, same volume. Watch what happens. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky. And as I looked, I'm flying. All right, the voice just got completely lost within the music. So what do we do about that? Well, most people will simply turn the volume down. So let's do that and see what happens. Let's just turn the volume down. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky. And as I looked, a fly went by. All right, it's still conflicting. I'm still trying to hear the voice over all the noise of the music, and we'll see why in a second here. All right, so we're going to throw a parametric EQ on channel three. That's where the music is, and it's going to allow us to see what is happening with that music. I'm going to mute channel one, my voice, and we're going to double click on the parametric EQ, and it's going to allow us to see the frequencies in that piece of music. Here we go. You notice how the entire spectrum of frequencies is just lit up. I mean, and it's way over, yeah, it's over the, the, the in this range, 70 to 80 is just super, a lot of frequencies. It's just, there's no place within those frequencies for a voice to fit. So we need to um, reduce frequencies strategically within this piece of music to allow my voice to fit over the top of it. So remember, in my voice here, I increased roughly the 2600, you know, I, I got rid of the bass, got rid of the treble. Uh, so I've only increased, you know, 2600 hertz. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is within that piece of music, I'm going to reduce 2600 and widen out a little bit. And what that does is it, it reduces the volume of those frequencies of the piece of music and allows my voice to kind of sit over the top in that spot. But that's not enough with this piece of music because there's just so many frequencies that are just getting just smashed here. So uh, since my voice is, you know, in this range here. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky. And as I looked, a fly went by. A fly went by. He said, oh, dear. I saw him shake. He shook with fear. OK, so the S's are like in this range right here. When I say the word fly, that I, that, that frequency right there, I'm seeing happen at about 1k here so i want to hear that frequency also so i'm going to go over back to the eq on the music and also reduce that 1k uh, we're at 794 and just broaden that out a little bit so i'm creating a pocket for my voice to sit in here uh, i also want the s's to come out um, so we're just going to decrease that one there too. So we have a pocket for my voice. Let's listen real quick and see how it sounds. See if it's any better. All right. 
I sat by the lake. Okay, I didn't decrease the volume yet, so we gotta do that first. Just, just bring, the, bring the overall level down to maybe negative 13 here. Let's see what happens. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. A fly went by. He said, oh dear. I saw him shake. He shook with fear. Okay, by the way, we would never use this kind of piece of music for um, a track like this, for a, a poem, a children's poem. But I'm just trying to show you how you can work with noisy music. So let's shut the EQ off and listen. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. Okay, you hear a lot of conflicting frequencies. Let's turn the EQ on. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. All right, you're able to hear much more clearly now the voice. Um, there's a whole lot more I would do to this EQ, and I'm, I wouldn't even ever use this song for something like that. But if you were using a really noisy song, the client gave you a really noisy song you needed to use, this is how you would do it. You would just find frequencies and cut those frequencies out and then boost those frequencies in your voice to let it sit on top. Um, so this is just a real brief overview on how we might do that. Um, there's been times I've had to really just absolutely cut frequencies really low on the music to allow things to fit in. Let's try that like that. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. And so cutting those frequencies allows you to actually increase the volume, or the overall volume of the music, and fill in the space. That's one thing I notice on a lot of videos when they, uh, when they cut out the music, it just makes it feel totally empty. But using this technique allows the whole audio to sound more full um, and while still allowing your voice to sit on top of it. So let's have one more listen to this thing with uh, no effects at all, and at, I'm leaving the volumes alone, and then with the effects added. So let's shut everything off. Okay, everything's off, all the cues, all effects are off on everything. I sure can't hear anything. Now let's turn them all back on again and play it again. I sat by the lake. I looked at the sky, and as I looked, a fly went by. All right, and that's actually with no tweaking of the volume between the voice and the music. That was just turning the effects I added on and off. All right, so that's just kind of a basic overview of how I would uh, take care of voice with music. I hope you guys learned something today and subscribe because we're gonna do a bunch more tutorials on other things within Premiere and DaVinci Resolve and maybe even have some After Effects too. So have a great day guys, we'll see you next video.